Software maintenance in a traditional environment is cumbersome and expensive. Some organizations spend more money on software maintenance than on software development. Substatement engineers are usually responsible for scheduling software maintenance. Maintenance is usually handled within maintenance windows. These windows are very narrow spans of time where an application may be taken offline. Maintenance often leads to downtime depending on what's being maintained. The DevOps continuous improvement paradigm replaces traditional maintenance. If applications are continuously integrated, there's no longer a need for a maintenance stage. Maintenance is now more collaborative and less expensive. Release scheduling, or builds, is continuous in DevOps. Software releases can be in the order of hundreds a day. Most traditional organizations may deploy an application every few months or even years. The volume and velocity of software releases has increased exponentially. Builds and deploys are no longer clumsy manual processes. This increased release scheduling has led to the wholesale automation of software releases. Automation avoids the problems that occur in manual releases by building in consistency into the build-deploy process. Continuous integration allows DevOps personnel to improve the process of the build-release cycle rather than concentrate on each individual application being deployed. There are many DevOps release automation tools. Of course, some are free. There are also some vendor-specific tools customized for a language or a platform. They speed up the automation release cycle. Applications can be built and deployed from a mouse click. Errors are reduced and the release process is standardized and repeatable. Automation reduces the cost of releasing software. Automation tools can be used to manage complex release and versioning tasks. Jenkins is a continuous integration tool. Written in Java, the project is an offshoot of another popular tool, Hudson. Jenkins is free. Plugins allow Jenkins to be run in non-Java environments. Like comparable tools, Jenkins automates the build process. The concept of continuous integration has replaced manual builds. Jenkins monitors the execution of the automated build steps. Builds can be initiated in a number of ways. Builds can be scheduled automatically through a commit to source control or even after another project has been built. Jenkins can run as a command line application or within a web container. There are many different continuous integration tools. They pretty much run the gamut on what they can do and what they support, but they're loosely organized into three categories, vendor, platform, and language. BuildBot is used for Python-based software development. BuildBot started as a lightweight alternative to Tinderbox. Mozilla is a flagship user of BuildBot. Cruise Control is used for Java and .NET applications. It includes many plugins that support a variety of source and build options. Team Foundation Server is a Microsoft continuous integration engine and is at the core of Microsoft's Application Lifecycle Management Solution, ALM. Cabby is an open source Perl based automated build and integration environment. Cabby builds jobs based on build info stored in a MySQL database and will support just about any command line build. GitHub is the world's largest code repository. Over the years, public source code control has gained widespread acceptance. GitHub allows teams to create and share software and is based on Git. Git allows distributed version control and source management control. It's been around for years and is the actual source repository for other source control tools such as Bitbucket. GitHub is a web-based GUI that runs over Git. GitHub is built for the public. It's also the world's largest code repository, claiming over 24 million public repositories. Collaborative features include wikis and integrated bug tracking. GitHub is part code repository and part social network. All the cool kids are there. Most open source projects can be found on GitHub, including Linux and Amazon Web Services. The whole GitHub application is built around getting public exposure to your code and asking for collaboration you have the ability to follow other GitHub users. Users can also follow entire projects. Developers friend each other, like on Facebook. Developers can also send requests to contribute to other projects. The main functionality of GitHub is forking, or copying an entire code repository from one account into another. This effectively allows you to take on the authorship of an entire project. Since Git encourages documenting small code changes, other developers can look to see how previous programmers solved tricky problems. 
Recently, GitHub has grown beyond source code management. Collaboration is not just for developers or code. Any document or group of documents can be versioned. GitHub is evolving and drawing non-developer users. Urban planners use GitHub to share documents such as historical maps and engineering surveys. Municipalities are storing laws on GitHub. Architects and engineers use GitHub for document and design collaboration. GitHub has become the Library of Congress for code and document repositories. Like most DevOps tools, GitHub has a free version. The free version of GitHub allows for an unlimited number of public repositories. Public repositories can be viewed by anyone. Private repositories can only be seen by you and your collaborators. The number of private repositories available is determined by your pay plan. Plans include 1 gig of storage, an additional 50 gig is available for $5 a month. GitHub runs everywhere. Most traditional and mobile platforms are supported. All GitHub users automatically get a personal account. As projects get larger, individual accounts can transfer into an organization account as your project adds collaborators. Future versions will support large file storage, LFS versioning. Git large file storage will replace large files such as videos, audio files, and high resolution pictures with a pointer inside Git. The actual contents of the file will be stored on a remote server such as GitHub Enterprise or GitHub.com. Other planned features are a what you see is what you get web-based text editor, Easel, is being incorporated into GitHub. GitHub will be offering more blog designs. Currently, it only has 11. Also, GitHub is integrating drag and drop. GitHub will continue to migrate toward the social network model. Bitbucket is a web-based source control version control tool. Bitbucket supports both Git and Mercurial revision control systems. This is an important point as Bitbucket is the largest source control versioning tool that supports both the popular Git and the more refined Mercurial communities. Considered a direct competitor of GitHub, it is the second most popular free source control tool ahead of Stash and Script. Owned by Atlassian, who also owns both Jira and HipChat, Bitbucket started out as an independent project in 2008 and supported Mercurial only. Git support was added in 2011, just after being purchased by Atlassian. Bitbucket is open source and written in Python. Bitbucket and GitHub have significant differences. GitHub has more social networking features, not exactly a detriment, but it's an important distinction. All of the glam and the reality show based look at me vibe of GitHub might turn off more quiet and refined developers who turn to Bitbucket. Bitbucket allows five private repositories in their free version. GitHub allows private repos with a paid subscription. Bitbucket has tighter integration with other DevOps tools such as Atlassian-owned Jira and Confluence. Both are open source and have relatively similar pricing plans. Both have decent free plans with plans becoming more expensive as the use of private repositories grow. Bitbucket is more focused toward enterprise developers and more private collaborative development. Teams can be built quickly. Bitbucket is free for up to five users on your team and only one US dollar for each additional user. Nonprofit and university accounts are also free and receive unlimited private and public repositories. GitHub favors public collaborative development and attracts coders looking for friends and to attach their name to an open source project. Because of this, Bitbucket does not have notable projects such as Linux. Bitbucket has 1 million users, GitHub has 4 million. Bitbucket also has more authentication support, such as Twitter and Facebook. Bitbucket allows code reviews on commits. Branches and pull requests can be created in the same repository. Bitbucket also allows you to create and manage multiple file code snippets, text, and multimedia assets. Most support is for the traditional desktop, however. Additional Apple and Android apps are being developed. GitHub repositories can be migrated to Bitbucket. Bitbucket, as well as GitHub, can be hosted locally. Bitbucket's behind-the-firewall Git repository solution is called Stash. Stash allows you to create and manage repositories, set up custom permissions, and connect via LDAP. 
New features of Bitbucket include upgraded diff functionality and an added bit of fun support of emojis. Many developers choose to use GitHub and Bitbucket. If you use Git as your ultimate code repository, projects and teams can move between the two tools pretty easily. Code that needs public exposure is sourced on GitHub. Public exposure adds to the marketing of the project. Closed enterprise code is sourced on Bitbucket. Private repositories do not get the attention of public repositories. For that, the developers in Bitbucket sigh a collective, so what? Projects that need tight integration into other DevOps tools tend to use Bitbucket. Projects that need more web GUI support use GitHub, albeit both of the last points may be subjective depending on the application. DevOps offers a plethora of tools used to automate task management. Task management tools are used from everything from checking email to viewing customer feedback on a deployed website. Task management tools allow the execution of commands in a target machine. The back end of these tools usually contain an API that automate operations that previously were manual. Task management tools automate simple redundant tasks. Tools like Asana automates project management by processing tasks and generating timelines. Tools usually run on a single device and are generally not good at multiple machine coordination. They have poor performance in working in hybrid environments. Any customization is expensive and may be impossible. Generally, they don't have out-of-the-box business logic. Cloud and container tools are used to manage virtual machines. Docker is a container tool that wraps up your application and allows it to be moved and deployed anywhere. Tools offer on-demand environments and delivery pipelines. An application can be staged and continually be piped and installed in a container to be deployed in the cloud. This system literally encapsulates applications with all of its dependencies and isolates it from the rest of the world. This also provides container standardization environments. Some of these tools don't adapt well to existing applications. Also, by encapsulating existing code and dependencies, container tools often automate the problem rather than fix it. System provisioning and configuration tools define the state of a system. In a nutshell, this means that configuration tools ensure that the thousands of network configuration options are set properly. They also ensure that all machines are in a predictable state, like they're up and running. Tools provide initial system configuration and services. They also monitor the intended versus actual state of a machine and can make configuration changes on the fly. Tools are not designed to handle application deployments, but to ensure that the network that the application is deployed upon is configured correctly. Continuous application integration, or CI tools, create application builds from source artifacts. Artifacts include build scripts, such as legacy tools like Ant. Tools provide code testing and analysis functionality. They often chain and distribute testing and build tasks. The concept of continuous integration and continuous delivery assumes that the software that made code branches on is also in a deployable state. This makes application deployment a very rapid process. Tools maintain production candidates from a main code branch. Continuous integration tools are generally not used for coordination across multiple machines. Pipeline orchestration tools allow the definition and the sequence of the delivery process. Applications are developed and advanced through incremental stages of software development and deployment readiness. Pipeline tools provide visibility into the application delivery process. This delivery process allows development and operations staff to continually evaluate the way software is promoted. They also provide a standard process in which applications are deployed. Pipeline orchestration tools can be used to define the process used by other tools that perform the actual deploy. Indeed, many pipeline tools feed into continuous delivery systems. Tools also provide a roadmap for each production application. Pipeline orchestration tools also provide a roadmap for each production application. Puppet by Puppet Labs is a Ruby-based open source configuration management tool. Like Chef, it is released as free software under the Apache 2.0 license. Depending on your source, Puppet is the most popular of the DevOps configuration management tools. Puppet is considered declarative. 
It integrates with about every other DevOps tool. It's designed for system administrators and is not for the faint of heart. Puppet is model-driven, so programming knowledge is not necessarily needed to use. But the complexity of Puppet is undeniable, and extensive engineering skills needed to implement it. Ansible by Ansible Incorporated is a Python-based configuration management tool. It is also open source and available for free under the GNU General Public License. It's considered easier to implement than Chef or Puppet. Currently it's included in the Fedora distribution of Linux and is also available for Scientific Linux, CentOS, Red Hat Enterprise Linux, as well as other operating systems. Ansible is simple and easy to learn. What distinguishes Ansible from other tools such as Puppet and Chef is that Ansible does not require any agents to be installed. By using no agents, nodes are not required to run daemons in the background. This reduces overhead and increases performance as the nodes don't have to keep pulling the controlling machine. SaltStack by SaltStack Incorporated is a Python-based configuration management tool. SaltStack creates Python modules that handle most of the configuration aspects of a Salt system. There is a growing SaltStack community and SaltStack documentation is pretty easy to learn and is pretty useful. SaltStack is designed to be simple yet scalable. SaltStack uses a master server architecture and the use of minions to control communication with target servers. It's faster than Puppet or Chef. The architecture is halfway between Puppet and Ansible. Docker from Docker Incorporated really falls under its own category. It does not use Linux container technology and does not consider itself as platform as a service. It's a hybrid configuration container management tool. Although not a direct alternative to Chef, it does bear mentioning here. It works on lightweight container-based technology. Their logo depicts a large shipping container docking with different items, such as a ship. Docker self-contains your application into containers. Containers can be configured and saved as templates for other hosts running the Docker engine. Templates can then be used to create more containers within the same OS. PowerShell DSC by Microsoft Corporation is used by Windows administrators to enable managing and deploying configuration data for software services. DSC contains a set of Windows PowerShell language extensions called commandlets. Like most of its competitors, PowerShell allows the software environment to be specified declaratively. PowerShell DSC allows existing applications and application configurations to be maintained. The use of PowerShell, indeed with other configuration management tools, is usually dictated by preference and platform. There really isn't any bad tools.